So a guy finally finds himself in a situation where he can finally work on the job that he'd been trying to get to for a long, long, long time. On this holiday, this Memorial Day, and I want to say to all of you uh, men and women in the service, I appreciate the heck out of you. I appreciate what you do and the uh, service that you give and the sacrifices that you make on this day that we honor the ones that gave the ultimate sacrifice. <laughs> oh no. Uh, some of you may have seen when I tied this this cover down because I was having problems with it coming up and doing damage to the vehicle um, it's just a short video on me ranting about why a car cover actually does damage um, but just a little bit of information about this vehicle. This vehicle has been sitting for 17 years. Has not run. It actually has sat in my garage for 16 years. Uh, one owner vehicle back in 1989 was bought off the showroom floor and uh, has lived with me ever since. Um, about 17 years ago it was parked because there's not really a whole lot of room in the back of this vehicle for uh, a baby car seat or anything like that so it got parked it um, also has some other issues and we'll get to that but uh, let's get this cover off and get a look around and see see what we can see Something hooked on over here. Okay, sometime today. Okay, okay let's look at this thing. It is a 1989 Pontiac Firebird Formula. Yes, it is the five liter, five, five liter fuel injected throttle body, throttle body squirters. And she is in good condition. I mean, clean, as clean as clean can be there there's really no rust on this thing these tires uh, were put on um, about a year minus two months ago and that is uh, when the vehicle was uh, towed over here to the shop now it does have some some staining right here and this uh, spoiler this crack right here that is typical and they do that over time they kind of warp the stuff so that's just what they do uh, they just can't take it can't take the heat over the years but um, you know other than that it's just it's immaculate actually so 
<coughs> excuse me the um it, it's had it's had its fair share of of hard times um it really has it went through a major hailstorm uh in florida back in the um early 90s like 1990 91 and uh it's been repaired since then and i gotta say it says wasn't repaired very good and uh it was resprayed and they didn't do a really good job i mean look we got paint got paint on the top of the the turn signal right there and uh, it's the same way like under here you can see the the paint that original paint and the other paint they just they did an absolutely terrible job so um um sad that my insurance company actually paid them because they did a terrible job but yeah that was many 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 years ago and i didn't really know any better so the uh one of the cool features that this thing is has is i got keys okay so let's uh let's get a uh, look in the trunk here see what's in it. i have no idea it sat, it sat in my garage for 16 years and then it uh, got towed here it's been sitting here for a year minus two months so it's about 17 years that it's been sitting I would say at least 17 years and uh, like I was like I said those tires were put on um, just so that I could um, get the vehicle on the tow truck and uh, rolled out here in the shop so let's uh, look in the trunk and see what we got so I'll tell you one thing guys and gals it's definitely gonna need a battery I can tell you that for sure uh, hold this going oh there it is and it lifts and it holds look at that there is not much here there's uh, an old purse uh, a bag got the license plates uh, these are covers to the t-tops and uh, this is uh, a cover that uh, the t-tops go in whenever they're not on the vehicle so um, other than that got a glove box right here so I'll get you in here let you see okay like I said uh, it's not not much uh, not much of anything is but light um, some clips and stuff uh, it's not in bad condition the carpet and stuff is not bad uh, this is uh, the cover that uh, you stick the t-tops in here and these things latch right here and hold your t-tops in the back and uh, we got a glove box here let's let's see what we got Psychic powers. Book. They got some road flares. And little lights. There's a bunch of junk. Yeah, nothing great in there. And here we got these covers are I guess that's what this is for. So I got this uh goes in here, holds this together. Um, I can tell you for a fact this thing's been off many times in its life. Uh, well, we got one, one still hanging on down there. So I'll pop that off. And, and there she is. It's a collapsible spare tire. So when you're out on the road, um, you're out on the road and you have a flat then uh you can pull the spare tire out and the spare tire is already flat because it's collapsible so unless you have a way of pumping this tire up 
it's useless. Uh, the only good part of about a collapsible spare tire is it saves you room in the trunk. Um, there is, and I've actually never used it. Let's see if I can get this out of here. I can get a hold of it. This, this thing right here. Um, this is, it's really old. I wonder if it's worth anything. I don't know. But um, you hook this up to your tire. It's, uh, see, it's a tire inflator. So stowaway tire inflator. And you hook this up and it airs up your tire. And that's because you have a collapsible tire or collapsible spare. Ooh, that don't look too good. <laughs> yeah. But um, because you have a collapsible spare, you have to have some way and something uh, some way to air it up um of course this was back in the late 80s and um i mean you could just put a little 12 volt pump you know hook it up into your cigarette lighter and brrr, you know air it up like that and uh that's the way that i did it i've uh, used a spare a couple times so you take the air out pull the valve uh core out and just you know sit on it and it, psh, it goes right back down and collapses right back into place i don't know if this thing's any good um, it's got good tread on it still. Um, like I said, uh, this vehicle spent um, pretty much, you know, 16 years in the garage. So it was sitting in the garage, wasn't out in the elements or anything like that. And uh, when I brought it here, I put this cover on it to try and protect it, preserve it. Um, so it's not like it's gotten like really, really hot in here or anything like that. You know, it probably has lately, you know, just sitting under that cover. But uh, let's, let's open the door and see, see what's in there. See if this thing closes. Yeah. Okay, let's get in here. Okay. Yeah, it's uh, just as... Just as dirty as it was when I left it. Got a lot of junk in here. Trash. It doesn't really smell that bad. Stale air. Um, smells kind of like a plastic speakers. Yep. Plastic speaker box. And it's got 297,745 miles. And I can guarantee you that is exactly correct. 297,745 miles. Um, we drove the heck out of this thing. We used it. I'll get you in here so you can see. Okay. So, yeah, it's got seat cover and it's got seat covers on both sides driving gloves women's driving gloves uh, yeah paperwork and stuff got an aftermarket CD mp3 player and uh, this one has all of the gauges I don't know if you can see that but you got some wiring hanging from right here. Got this, you know, don't steal me kryptonite bar. So, big hit back in the 80s. And you can see that brake pedal is all worn out. Doesn't even have any rubber on it anymore. Uh, this carpet has seen better days. And uh, a lot of more junk back here. Look at this. We got some boom boom box, major boom boom box, a couple amps, ah, uh, the younger days. Um, yeah, these uh, these were pile drivers that I actually I actually reconed. Uh, that's a long, 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 long time ago, and I bet the seat is in like really good condition too. It's been preserved because it's just been. 
sitting like this. Well, now I say that, look, there's the cover to the audio unit. Some kind of bracket, something. I say that preserved, but um, I mean, if you look at the seat in here, it um, the seat cover itself, it's it's wore out. And we always, always had seat covers on these to save the actual seat so the seat won't wear out. But uh, that didn't work. And it still wore out. And uh, we never actually got to enjoy sitting on the regular seat because we we're always sitting on seat covers to help protect those seats. So I don't know. Think about that, guys. When you put seat covers on to protect your seats, you might not be protecting them. Um, uh, anyway. Um, so yeah, it's auto magical, um, and of course it's got all the thrills and stuff. Got this thing doesn't want to come open. That's a a problem with the spring in the back. That was pretty typical too. And we got the T tops. This headliner has been replaced. That's why it's still kind of up there. And doesn't look that bad. It has been replaced. So, um, this door card is in really good shape. I mean, usually these things are all flapped out and everything. Um, kind of like this one right here. Um, this one never really had, you know, elastic pushing it in much. Look, there's a remote control. You know, you need a remote control to control your audio unit because, I mean, the driver's seat is just too far from the audio unit. Um, <laughs> so let's, let's get under the hood. See what that looks like. Okay, let's see if we can get this. That's the way you open, you know. Oh, yeah. Oh, my God. Yeah. We have miceage. Yeah, mice, meese, mouses. Um, ooh, yeah. It is not good. Not good at all. Um, yeah, let me get something to hold this hood up. And then I'll get you in here. Okay. Adjusted. There we go. Vice grip. Best tool in the world. Uh, also got something here. Hopefully I can try and turn this engine over. But, um, I mean, she's complete. Um, now complete with, uh, with rat's mess. Uh, <coughs> it's, uh, it's pretty bad. It's pretty bad under here. Um, I mean, <clears throat> you would think the interior would smell, but oh my God. Yeah, let me get you in here and you can see what I'm looking at. Okay, so you can see this uh, big gigantic mess up on top here. And um, that's been on up there for a while. Uh, here's the, the battery that's got the good old side post battery. God, I hate those. And uh, yeah, I got a uh, mess of junk and stuff right here next to the blower motor. I uh, don't know what that is. It's got a wooden dowel in there. So, yep, I must have worked on this before. In fact, I know I did. Uh, we got rat chewings, you know, here and there. Uh, that's gonna be an issue. Most definitely got rat chewings through heater hoses. Um, ignition wires. Sit and look over here. I got a big rat's nest over here too. Some junk, trash. Oh, this has got to be vacuumed out. 
this thing right here yeah it used to used to have a glow light system underneath it and uh aftermarket alarms um remote start and just anything a young mike could get his eye his hands on of course we got the smog pump you know smog out system so uh typical for 80s um yeah let me get this let me get this off and see what we got going on underneath there okay let's get see if we can get this thing off of here so this thing's all rusted and that's uh, didn't happen of course in the garage of course uh, rats you know peeing and pooping on it didn't help but this hood right here and it's got this little scoop uh, it's like a cowl induction looking hood um, it leaks it has always leaked leaked water so oh god okay so that out there and it's not doesn't look bad got the throttle body fuel squirters get the air air intake uh, air temperature sensor so that's what that is right here in the middle I don't know if you can see that but um, I mean every time that people take these off they're like I'm gonna take them off and I'm not gonna I'm not gonna put it back on. Well this plug right here goes to your air inlet air temperature sensor. That's what that is sitting in there. So the uh, system needs that. It needs to know what the air temperature is um, to operate this throttle body properly, you know, get your fuel squirters working right. So let me get this out of here. This, oh yeah. Okay, there was nothing in there. Just to let you know. I looked at that, make sure I wanted to see that before I pushed on the gas pedal. And uh, yeah, there was nothing in there. So that's good. It looks really clean. I'll show you. Okay, so you can see what's in there. I can take this off, and you see that. It looks pretty clean. Got the uh, throttle body fuel squirters right here, dual squirters. And you can see this, what the mices have done. Oh my God, that is ridiculous. I mean, it's not like I was going to save this hose anyway. But I would like to start this vehicle today and run around and see if we can have a little bit of fun with it. Um, ignition coal distributor. Yeah, so these, these things up here, it's that cow induction thing, which is, uh, you know, it's really cool. It's a cool look but it's not using it as a cow induction so you see see that it's not really using it as a cow induction it's blocked off but you know it would leak whenever it rained and it would drip right on top matter of fact had um distributor issues from getting water on them before um, look at all these all these hoses and stuff so yeah this is all, all nasty it's just nasty and we got the fuel lines coming in right here running back i got the fuel inlet fuel return back there uh, belt didn't look that bad. Doesn't feel like there's any coolant in it. 
Ah, uh, nope. That's that's bone dry. That's what it looks like. So great. This uh, let's make a list. This uh, battery's gone. I'm gonna need a new battery. I need to go down to the parts store, buy a battery. Um, get, I would say get some coolant, but um. I got plans for this vehicle whenever I'm, we're done here and it, it does not involve this engine. So ain't no sense of putting coolant in there. We're gonna have to just drain it back out. So I'll put water, um, especially since there's a really good chance it's gonna leak out all over the place anyway. But man, I'd really like to take this thing on the road and see how she performs. You know, sitting uh, 17 years. Um, I'm not sure what this is. Oh, this looks like a. This, that's definitely looks like a blower motor. Um, yeah, blower motor fuse. That's. It's got a different blower motor. This blower motor didn't come with the vehicle, so this blower motor. <laughs> uh, it fits in there. Uh, originally, um, it had a two-wire blower motor. It had uh, power and ground going to it, and that's what this is powering ground um, it's got a one wire motor blower motor in it right now I guess this is to protect it um, and we got the ground coming off right here and it's grounding right here so hey if it works is it a dumb idea um, and the thing is I can pretty much guarantee the fuel in this thing it ain't good it ain't good at all but we're gonna try and run off what's in the fuel matter of fact I'm gonna go down and get some gas and I'm gonna pour a bunch of gas in the tank and see um, if we can dilute it, see if we can get the fuel pumping. Um, it's a um, fuel injection system, so it has a fuel pump in the tank and I do not know if that fuel pump is working. So I may be just throwing, you know, five gallons of gas, you know, down the drain. But um, if not, then we're gonna have to figure out how to hook something up um to get this thing running right so i need a battery um some kind of uh fuel something i can pour down the yap right there uh so we can try and get this thing started um and um some gas to put in the tank um we'll crank it over see if we got spark oh let's uh, try and crank it over right now uh see if the engine turns over because if it don't turn over then uh that's all out the window we need to figure out why it's not turning over i mean it should um unless you know the mice you know have you know made um some kind of um apartment complex in there and we'll we'll find out um so uh, let's try and turn it over right now okay i want to see if i can turn this engine over with this little bolt on the front a little five eighths bolt and this uh big ratchet right here see if i can get it to crank over if i can get that thing on there okay uh, let's see yep it's turning it's hard, hard to keep this on because the water pump is in the way There's a big nose cone on this thing. I can't reach. Still going. It's not bad. Uh, it's turning kind of easy. So. Don't know what the compression is going to be like, but I haven't ran into, into any mice hotels yet. Pistons are still moving, so I say that's good. Um, yeah, let's um get some. Uh, let's go down the parts store and get some parts. Okay, I'm back from the parts store. And oh, yeah, it sounds like a 
gong. Anyway, uh, I got some transmission fluid. Uh, one thing I forgot to do is uh, check the fluids and stuff. Um, and so I don't know. Okay. So years ago, I rebuilt a transmission in this thing. Um, it's had uh, water pumps, it's had alternators, many, many a starters. Um, this uh, thing had um, what they call the uh, clicky start issue, where instead of the starter actually turning, it would just click, 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 because uh, it can't stand the heat. It sits right underneath the exhaust manifold. Um, but um, the transmission uh, started slipping. I rebuilt the transmission and I uh, was in a hurry. I needed to get her done. And um, the aftermarket torque converter that I bought uh, didn't fit in the thing correctly. Um, it would get stuck going in and then it would be stuck and you had a hard time pulling it out. And I put it in and out, in and out. And believe me, the pump was lining up and all that stuff. Um, so it got to a point where I either needed to try and get another torque converter, which was going to take a couple days, or just slam that one in there. So I did the right thing and I slammed it in. And um, you know, whenever I did that, I'm like, you know, I um, feel sorry for the next guy who has to try and take this thing out. And I put it in and it worked, you know, worked fine, no problem. Um, driving on and stuff until one day it decided to start leaking transmission fluid and of course it's leaking from the front seal so um, yeah it sat in my garage leaking transmission fluid all over the garage floor um, so I'm sure that's probably low so I just bought some transmission fluid to stick in there uh, some of the premium ATF from O'Reilly's and um, I got some true fuel you know, because we don't want to put any of that fake fuel down there. And this has, um, uh, it's a 40 to one mix. It's got uh, two, two cycle engine oil in it. So when we pour this down the yap, you know, we're actually helping to lubricate the rings and stuff like that. We're not just, you know, washing them out, you know, so uh, that works good. Uh, I got some glass cleaner and um, I got one of these. Uh, I don't know how this is going to work, if it even works. Um, but uh, what this is, is a valve. It's a valve for uh, shutting off your, um, your, um, uh, what the heater core or whatever but I can use this to bypass these hoses that are all chewed up at least that's the thought anyway so we don't need a heater core right now it's uh, 94 degrees in the shade you know south central Texas end of May hey, you know that's the way it is and of course I'm standing out here in the sun uh, so I need to get some tools to uh, get this um, battery out of here and um we got a new battery for it and um then uh we'll start going with this okay so i don't have my recovery tools or anything but i am here at the shop so i just keep walking back and forth to get tools and uh there's a bunch of wires and stuff on here that i have no idea what they are is they're, they're fused wires I'm thinking that they're going to accessories and uh, I'm just gonna take those off and um, leave them off and see see what happens um, I don't think we need those to go and pull this out of here real quick bolt I mean come on seriously who put this bolt in here no seriously that's a long bolt and it's just a hold down I mean come on what okay there it goes look at that are you serious that's a bolt 
And it's a hole down bolt. And just the rest of it. I mean, seriously, come on. Okay. Just so I wanted to make sure that it wasn't going to come out. Oh, yeah, that's nice. <laughs> something to hold this and something to move that. Looks like I gotta go back to the toolbox. Okay, I'll be right back. Okay, so back to this. Oh, look, you know what? Um, no. You don't have to waste all that time. Just try and turn the outer bolt. Well, I did. I tried to turn the outer bolt, and the whole thing turned. Then I went and I tightened it. But I didn't try and turn the outer bolt again. Yeah. That's the way it goes. Let me get this one off. Man. I mean, this is side post batteries and it like you know the best thing that GM ever came out with you know GM AC Delco I blame them all because when those things strip that's it they're stripped they're sticking bolts and nuts and things in there oh, get out of there oh great that's another scratch Oh, sorry about that. Okay, this right here is probably the most rust that is on this car. And it is right here in the battery tray. Of course, that is like the first place that starts to rust. And honestly, it is not that bad. There's some bubbling. There's really no rot to speak of. But something's going to have to be done about this. You know, this is going to have to be sanded down, grind down, get all that rust off of there, put some rust preventative, and repaint it. And, um, <laughs> yeah, I got plans for this vehicle. So, um, yeah, we'll probably get that done. Okay, you may or may not recognize this thing right here get these wires out of the way this is the steel me junction box that you see on Fords it is a relay it's a starter relay and the reason why this thing is set up is because uh, like I was saying before um, this uh, had the clicky start issue which um, the starter wouldn't crank because it gets too hot but if you put more power to it then it could actually uh crank you get that that starter solenoid to move over a lot quicker and uh, get the thing to crank over at least that was the idea and uh so because of that um this um thing right here was put in and what it does is it puts more power to the solenoid uh directly from the battery and um allows the thing to start better at least that's the idea um okay let's get this battery in oh yeah it's a particular reason why i got this particular battery and uh no it's not because of the go handle um it's got the posts on the top and the posts on the side and uh there's a reason for that and i will talk more about that towards the end of the video um it's a surprise so stick around for that uh, let's get this battery in here come on sitting on all the cables i actually don't need that Positive in here first. Let's 
Try not to cross thread it. Don't cross thread it. Do not, don't. I said no. I said don't. Don't cross thread. Okay. I think it's going in. This high performance wrench right here. And let's stick to the. Are you ready? Okay. I'm gonna put the negative battery terminal on and see if we catch on fire. Here's something. You hear that? It's the um that is the antenna. It has a electronical antenna. Okay. Let's disconnect this. I need to find out how to disconnect the electronical antenna. Uh, because that's just going to wear our battery down. So for some reason, the antenna is uh, moving and we don't know why. And with all the mices and, uh, you know, chewings going on here, um, you don't know what you're going to get, you know. So um, I don't want there to be a fire, but um, I would like to turn that off, unplug that or whatever. And see what is this I don't know okay let me see if I can figure that out okay uh, I found a fuse underneath the dashboard uh, for the radio I just pulled it out um, but it didn't stop this thing from going off here so um, what I'm gonna have to do is get down here and take this off get in there that's where the the automatic um, antenna is and see if I can just disconnect it uh, hopefully it won't take that much uh, of this tire in the way I didn't want to have to raise the thing up but uh, we'll see okay I think I figured it out so you can't you can't reach anything in there it's there's wire harnesses and stuff in the way and, you know there's a big rat's nest there too that's nice and uh, so I was looking in between here and I noticed there's a wiring harness coming this way and this is the harness that goes to it and then I had to pull all this off I had to pull this off because here's the relay that operates the auto magical antenna and I just disconnected that and now why is that run you know in a weird awkward location because they're not run like that from the factory but this is practically factory but it's not exactly so now I realize I remember uh, many 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 years ago this auto magical antenna went out and they're pretty expensive and I just happened to have one for a Pontiac Bonneville and you know that thing fit right in there it ain't no difference except you know the wiring harness is a little bit shorter <laughs> but hey you know if it works is it dumb you know okay so now let's get this battery hooked up and hopefully nothing blows up okay let's get this hooked up and i can i can hear sparking from the battery which means there's some kind of a load oh well the door's open you know maybe we got some dome lamps on or something this down yeah we don't know if this starter is even gonna crank you know the engine cranks over is the starter any good we don't know um, okay this I'm going to disconnect these I do not want the thing to start trying to pump that nasty fuel in there uh, as a matter of fact I'm gonna get some of that uh, get some fuel I got like five gallons of fresh fuel let's put it in the tank and this check the fluid levels we are <sighs> smells good it's not bad not bad at all it's uh, 
you know, we could run on this for a little while. We can run on it for as long as we're gonna run on it. Uh, and that's just fine. What about the blood stick? It doesn't even smell burnt at all. It looks clean, like almost like brand new clean. And there is fluid on it. So once we get it going, I'll check that. And I got transmission fluid here, you know, so uh, we can put fluid in if we need to because we want to get the shifting, you know. Um, let's, uh, let's see if the thing cranks. Uh, I'm not looking to start it. Let's see if it cranks. But first, I want to put gas in there because as soon as I turn the key, if that fuel pump is even working, it's going to start uh, trying to pump fuel. And we got a bypass here. We got fuel inlet and uh, fuel return. So hopefully get some new fuel in there and it'll flush this thing out or the pump might not work at all and then we're just wasting money and time and um, we have to figure something else out. Um, okay, let's get some fuel in there. Okay, let's see if we can get all of this in there. This, ooh. It's like a fine wine. Nope. <coughs> <coughs> yeah. Um, it's got the good stuff. Uh, okay. Let's see if we can pour this in there. Without making too much of a mess. Oh yeah, like that. Oh my god, come on. You gotta be kidding me. Get in there. I just can't hang on to it. Yeah, she's leaking. This special lip right here ain't helping me. Hmm. Oh, what Frank Sinatra's doing that? No. It's such a nice day. I mean, there's like no wind and the sun is just baking down you know i look up at the sun it's just a big smile just a big smile just like in the kids cartoon it's smiling at me baking everything everything around come on get in there maybe yeah, i should should have checked the fuel fuel gauge. Now that I got a battery on it, I'll just see if the fuel gauge reads anything. I turned the key on. Oh my god. Yeah, I would say that the fuel gauge isn't working. And uh, the reason why I say that is because she's fuel. Dude, she's just full. It's over full. I mean, it's just. It's coming out, you know. When they're like that, you know, you could take fuel out of her, you know. It's true. Your car gets old enough, it produces fuel. Y'all didn't know that? Yeah. That's why you gotta hang on to old, old vehicles. Nope. Nope, that ain't true. <laughs> wow, how many five gallons do I have in here? You know, that's almost all of it, so I'm just going to stop right there because you never know. You never know what might happen. This fuel cap, she needs some lubrication. 
Come on, really? She won't. She doesn't want to go on. How? How is that even possible? It, it says three clicks, but I mean, it's not even on. Oh well. You know what? Good enough. Okay. Okay. Check. 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 Um, let's see if she cranks. Not looking to start it. Just see if she cranks. I do not hear a fuel pump. Yeah, we're building oil pressure. Excellent. We got good oil pressure. Now, you hear that? That little gallop there. That means that uh, one of the cylinders, she ain't compressing as good as the rest. And you know, that's fine. It's fine for what we want to do with it. Nope, I don't know if there are any spark. You can hear the compression. And I couldn't hear the fuel pump, so I'm guessing there's no fuel. But um, let's put some of this true fuel in there. See if we can get the thing to kick over. If we can, then we know we got spark. You know, we got compression and all that. Um, if it doesn't kick over, then we got to go to pulling distributor cap, chicken powers and grounds and all that stuff. So let's put some of this stuff in there and see what happens. Okay, I'm going to get a little bit of this. You know, it's not like a... Ma magical mechanical Ooch, ah. that is way too, way too much perfect okay let's see what happens cranking her over starts okay um yeah and i'm guessing i hook up these um injector squirters here plug them in they ain't gonna do nothing because i don't think we got any fuel pressure i don't have, think we got any fuel at all period it means that we're gonna have to get some more fuel we're gonna have to run our makeshift fuel pump pour a little bit more into each one try not to do too much okay. let's see Pretty sure we got no fuel. Uh, hmm. <laughs> so we got fuel lines running down this way, right here. Be easier to take them off here and add fuel lines than to try and mess with this stuff over here. So let's uh, let's do the right thing and. Put some more of this in there. Let's hear it start up again. Cause, uh, yeah. I mean, you know, maybe I can bottle feed it and it'll come around. One thing I can do is go back there and just wrap on the gas tank. Sometimes that'll bring her around. think about this I don't hear 
the fuel pump pumping. I mean, I could pull this, um, the fuel pressure line off, blow air back to it, but it ain't gonna help, you know, not if the fuel pump ain't, ain't pumping. So, let me take this off and see, see what I can do. Okay, I think this is what I'm gonna do. Um, I'm taking these fuel lines off right here. And they're coming off very easily. Nah, I ain't kidding you. It's coming right off. No problem. No problem at all. And they're dry. They're bone dry. But this top one here. Oh, yeah, I just lost a, an O-ring. But that doesn't matter. Does not matter at all. And this is a... 3 8 hose. I fit it over the top of this, and yeah, and I put a uh, a clamp on that. And this one. Let's see if I can fit this one on. since the return doesn't okay I'll just get a bunch of 3 8 hose so gotta go down to the parts store I get a fuel pump clicky clack fuel pump possibly I need 9 to 13 psi I have a bunch of fuel pumps I mean I got a whole lot of them and they're uh, from the um, Mazda um, fuel pump recall and they still work you know but those things put out like 70 psi and i don't have a fuel pressure regulator so i don't want to do that but if i can get a clicky clack fuel pump run some hose down cross the thing into the engine into the the cabin right there i can get a gas can and i'll just uh run fuel like that just so we can drive this thing and you know Maybe do burn out a couple donuts, you know. It's kind of the last hurrah for this engine right here. Uh, hopefully we can keep cooling in it. Oh, I'm gonna probably cut that off and move that over because we got mousy chewings right here on the, oh my God, mice. Okay, so I run down to the parts store um get a bunch of this 3 8 hose and a clicky clack fuel pump that puts out 9 to 13 psi and then i'll be back and i gotta get some more fuel too so okay let's do it okay this is what i got going here i had to run through uh, a bunch of parts stores and stuff so I got this fuel line I went out to Horizon I got a whole roll of fuel line uh, it's a 3 8 fuel line uh, running this one down and I'm going to run it right into there okay this is the fuel pressure and then I'm going to take the other one that's down here and I'm gonna run that to the return line I'm gonna run that all the way back and I got a fuel can with fuel in it. I need to relieve this pressure. Anyway. And right in here, I got, this is a Mazda fuel pump. I don't know if this thing's going to work because it usually runs 60, 70 PSI. And I only need 9 to 13 PSI. So it's way too much fuel pressure. And so I have no idea. The thing might blow up. This is really sketchy. So... Um, I got this wire and I have it grounded right here and you know that relay that was coming on and keeping the auto magical antenna going up I'm gonna grab power from right there and I'll power this thing up I'll run fuel into the throttle body and then the return will come back here and we'll either it's either gonna work or it's gonna blow up 
Let's find out. Let me get this hooked up. Okay, so I had to move over to this tank, um, which I don't know how that's gonna fit in here, but the fuel pump wouldn't fit in that hole right there. So um, I ran it for maybe about five seconds and I do not see any kind of leaks or anything like that. We don't even know if these injectors are even squirting. So I have no idea. Um, so I guess we're gonna find out right now. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to, I'm gonna get, I'm gonna pour some stuff down the yap right there. I'm gonna get in here. I'm gonna reach over. Plug this in right there. That's gonna turn the pump on. And when I ran the pump, I could hear the fuel returning and the fuel return. And then I'm gonna start cranking. And it should start, at least for a little bit, just like it was doing before. But let's see if it continues to run. Uh, see if we get any fuel injection spray squirting ability. Uh, I'm gonna leave that outside the vehicle for right now because, you know, that's a little bit sketchy. So, and I ran this hose and I went to run it over the throttle cable. Um, zip tied it over here so it's furthest away from the exhaust manifold as possible. I don't know. Let's, let's see what happens. We'll find out. Oops, that's way, way too much. Perfect. Okay, getting in, hitting the throttle, or plugging it in. Okay, it's plugged in. Starting it. and it ain't getting nothing. I don't feel anything. Uh, let's give it another shot. Of course, it's way too much. Do some... Injector adjustment, injector adjustment. Okay, let's see. No squirters. No squirters at all. Seriously. Is the fuel pump still pumping? Let's see. No, fuel pump is not pumping. Great. Hello, welcome to Hell on Wheels. Yeah, it's uh, the sun. Oh my God, it has got to be at least 120 degrees or so out here. It is ridiculous. I am dying. I had to actually take a break and go inside and sit in front of a fan for a little bit because I was getting a little woozy. Okay, so this is what happened. Uh, my um, experiment with the um, auto magical uh, antenna thing right there didn't work. So I found, I, I ran this wire right here. I found a wire down here at the um, 
the fuse box and it doesn't have very good pin tension, but it's in there as long as it stays. Okay, and I'm running over here and um, because of my line was too short, I had to put this butt connector. It goes all the way into the thingy, you know, where the pump is and then the pump, you know, puts pop, um, fuel and then the return line comes over here. And this is my ground. Um, I, I don't know. Okay, so um, what I'm going to do is uh, I'm just going to go ahead and try and start it. The good thing about uh, going into the fuel or the uh, fuse box right now is it does have power when the key is on, when the key is starting. And that's it. Turn the key off, no power, fuel pump shuts off. So as long as the key's on, fuel pump should be running. So let's try and start it now. Let's do that. Okay. I pour a little bit of this down the yep here and a little bit i mean you know i'm gonna flood the heck out of it you know pouring like you know 20 million cups okay let's go i'm gonna crank it now fuel pump should engage cranking it's running has a misfire it's got a misfire big time that's for sure and I'm sure it has nothing to do with mysises running around chewing hoses and wires and stuff right it couldn't possibly be uh, and I saw the injectors injecting so that's that's good Wait, how does this go? Wait, not, not like that. Go this way, right? Yeah. Okay. Let me get this thing right here. Let's see if we can start it up again. Uh, I don't want no vacuum leaks. I'll plug this in. So we've got no vacuum leak there. And the good old air temperature sensor. Plug that in underneath here. Where does this go? Okay, got that in. Now, let's see if we can figure out which plug wire it is, or, you know, I'm, I'm just guessing it's gotta be a plug wire. These wires run way down there and they're hard to get to because they're underneath. Let's try and start it up again. This time without spraying stuff down there. to do anything. Can't do nothing. I think this is on upside down. Maybe, maybe not. I don't know. What the heck is going on here? How does this work? That seems right. That sits right there like that. That's right. Got good oil pressure. Uh, battery's charging. Ah, 
the second I come around here. The second. Okay, I'm gonna get some water in this thing. I'm gonna try and cut this back first. Get some water in this thing before I run it anymore. And turn the key off. Okay, I'm just gonna pour some down in there because. You get all these tools, put them in the shape because they are 500 degrees Fahrenheit. Yeah, every one of them. That burns. That's burning. Whew. Okay, I need to go get a screwdriver so I can move that hose over. Okay guys, I am, I'm thinking about shutting her down just for today. Uh, just for today. It is, it's way too hot out here. Um, now that I can get it to run, I'm uh, thinking about pulling it up closer to the building there and then probably another day, hopefully another day this week, maybe tomorrow, uh, I can get in the shop, figure out what that misfire is, get that figured out and um, you know get these hoses and stuff figured out so we can let the thing run and uh see if the thermostat opens up and everything and once we get all that done then we're gonna take her out on the road and we're gonna definitely see how she performs i guarantee it I, man i wish i could have done that today this has been such a long day it is absolutely ridiculously hot out here it is ridiculous um so let's see if um i, I don't even know if i got brakes you know um, the pedal Pedal feels all right. Um, I didn't have any vacuum. Um, yeah, we don't need that, right? Okay, let's see if I can start it up and crawl this thing up over towards the shop. Okay, let's see if this thing can move. Key on, start it. It's got power steering. See if it goes into gear. I got no brakes. Great. Okay, sorry about that guys. Uh, the other day it got hot. I mean, it's so hot. I just couldn't take it anymore. I actually thought that I was going to have a heat stroke. It was so bad. Um, but we got the vehicle running. We, she drove under her own power too. You know, drove from there to here, you know. Uh, it, it definitely has uh, issues. I got um, uh, no brakes. Well, it has brakes it just has um uh, no brake booster so it's uh, like a big vacuum leak or something i don't know if it's the booster itself or what i'm gonna have to look into that it also has uh, misfires um it seems like it's running on um maybe um um you know six seven cylinders maybe maybe five um so uh, I wanted to take the thing out. I wanted to uh, get um, do some donuts, do some burnouts, stuff like that. And we're definitely not going to be able to do uh, that sort of thing with um, you know running on five 
six cylinders. So uh, what I'm going to do is uh, I need to pull it into the shop and uh, look it over. Uh, I'm guessing that probably it's got some rat chewing going on in the, um, some of the um, uh, ignition wires, uh, stuff like that. And um, I need to check it out, uh, fix that, get it running, get it running so we can drive it. And, um, and you know, give that, that engine's last hurrah, you know, uh, it's, it's a due diligence, I guess. Um, and uh, we're gonna do a lot more stuff, you know, with that. This is going to be, um, this uh, video is uh, gonna be part one of uh, very many and uh, don't worry about it. Um, it, it. We're coming back. We're going to do a lot with this. As a matter of fact, uh, towards the beginning of the video, I talked about, you know, why I put that particular battery in, the one with the top post uh, and side post or whatever. And uh, I promised you, you know, I had something I was going to show you. So I'm going to show that to you right now. Okay, this uh, is one of the things I wanted to show you. Um, you may have seen this before. Um, if you had watched all my videos, but, um, you know, maybe not. This is a 383 that I built, uh, many years ago and it does not have a lot of miles on it. And, um, we are going to be going through this engine and, um, uh, the, uh, all this, all the stuff you see on top, this is, a uh, uh, factory, you know, these injectors aren't factory, but, um, you know, uh, all, all that's going. This intake, uh, this engine had a lot of power, created a lot of power. It's got trick flow G2 twisted wedge heads. It's got trick flow um, pistons in it. It has um, uh, Eagle steel crank. It, it's got a lot of goodies in it. Uh, roller rockers, roller cam, um, just everything. Um, it looks uh, factory on the outside, but it definitely is not. Um, all of this on top, this is all going away. Uh, have all new stuff that's going in it. We're gonna pull these heads off. Uh, may even uh, send the heads out and get them ported. You know, uh, better, uh, more um, airflow, uh, definitely. And uh, this, this, although this looks cool, I've always thought this looked kind of cool, but this is a major restriction on airflow. So we're gonna do away with all that. Uh, no more airflow restrictions. Um, and even these, these uh, little headers, we're gonna get rid of those. We're gonna put some big headers. Um, and uh, we're gonna do a lot. We're gonna do a lot with that vehicle. Uh, everything's gonna be stripped out of it. The interior is gonna be stripped out. The, uh, of course, the engine is gonna have, uh, it's gonna have an AC system. It has an AC system now, but it has a factory AC. And um, there's that uh, cow panel uh, AC uh, that kind of comes into the engine compartment. We're going to get rid of all that. We're going to put an aftermarket AC so the uh, engine compartment is a lot cleaner. But um, I'll show you uh, some of the parts that I have already here. So this is the intake that's going in it. And yes, it is Holly, Holly intake with a, uh, it's got these uh, fuel rails. Uh, so it is an EFI system, uh, wide open intake. So this is what's gonna go on it. And um, let's see, I got more stuff. Let me get these boxes open and I'll show you what I got. Okay, so you've seen the um, intake manifold. So let me, let me show you this. This is a uh, Terminator X. This is the uh, wiring harness. It's gonna be the new wiring harness for the vehicle. And it is, of course, I'm going with a standalone system that I can program uh, to get uh, the amount of power that I need. Uh, this is gonna be my drag and drive car. So it's gotta be, it's, it's needs to have power. I'm not talking, you know, tons and tons of power. I'm talking about something that we can have fun with, you know, at uh, drag and drive events, but it has to be reliable and it has to be able to drive, you know, hundreds of miles, you know, at a time and then drag race and then drive another, you know, a couple hundred miles or so, you know, and do it all over again. That's the whole idea. That's, that's the fun part of it. Um, so that's what I'm hoping to do with this vehicle. And so, and we're going to start with the Terminator X. Um, it, if you can see right over here, this is uh, my transmission and it doesn't have a lot of miles on it. It doesn't look 
too good, but I'm um, going to be going through this transmission. This is a 700R4 transmission, so it's not electronically shift shifted, but I will be getting uh, another module that I can control the torque converter in this thing. And, you know, we'll see, we'll see how she holds up. Um, they do make uh, parts for um, 700R4s and 4L60E transmissions that are um, heavy duty nowadays. So if that thing blows up, uh, we may um, you know, be rebuilding it. Um, also, look at this. Ain't that pretty. So it is a Holley four barrel, 1000 CFM. And so, uh, like I said, we're going to try and, and eliminate, the, you know, the issues that we had with this thing back here, uh, you know, not, not having enough airflow. Uh, this is the uh, Holly EFI uh, fuel system. So, uh, of course, we're going to be replacing the gas tank. And uh, this is uh, going to have a fuel pump that uh, sits uh, on the... Um, on the rail or something, you know, outside the tank, so we can replace the pump if we need to without having to drop the whole tank. Um, but we're replacing all the lines and everything, um, and, and of course, you know, it includes a uh, fuel pressure regulator and just uh, everything we need uh, for the system. Uh, Holly set this up um, so that uh, everything works together. You know, this uh, right here, see, it even says Holly EFI. Um, this is a uh, dual sink distributor so um it is a um uh, uh, electronic uh, dual sync distributor uh, made to go with the holly system and the terminator x so uh hopefully it won't have any uh distributor issues um i got the uh this uh msd um so um you know more power the uh ultra 6a um uh, also got uh this um um, EFI uh, ignition ignition coil set. I got a, a bunch of sensors, um, Holly fuel injectors, uh, the, the fuel injectors that I wanted to use um, for this system. Um, and I think these are only uh, 48, 48 PSI. Ah, I can't remember exactly right now, but we'll get into that when we start putting these in. Uh, and of course, uh, the way this system is set up, if I need to swap injectors that they're easy to just pull the rail and pull them out put some new ones in program the um terminator x and then away we go so um we can uh can do that real easily so uh and then of course i got a bunch of sensors and stuff here too uh that i'm gonna need so uh as you can see there's a lot of plans a lot of plans um uh, that i'm want to do with this car with this engine so um um, it's, that's all coming up. This is going to be a multi-video series and uh, of course uh, as soon as I can get to it then we're going to get to it and uh, I'm uh, really excited about this and I hope you all are too and uh, stick around. Um, if you haven't subscribed yet uh, I really recommend that you subscribe so you can uh, see all these videos and, and uh, what we do with this thing. Uh, the car is going to be completely stripped down engine, uh, transmission, uh, rear end, um, the entire interior is going to be uh, pulled out. Uh, it's going to have uh, a uh, roll cage put in it. It's gonna, definitely going to have the uh, bottom of the uh, vehicle is going to be completely stiffened. Now we're going to stiffen up the whole vehicle because it's got T-tops on it. So we want to make sure that the vehicle is nice and stiff. We don't need, want anything twisting or anything like that. Um, so uh, stick around. We're going to show all that. Um, so. Um, for a shop around the garage, um, I appreciate the heck out of each and every one of you, uh, and I'll see you in the next one.